It's not even 8.30 and already a sliver of doubt is nagging like one of the irritating flies between the heat and the dust. Will this track even be worth it? And more to the point, why did I let her sleep in? I'm gonna die today. I'm wearing long pants and a long sleeve shirt, but get all bit up. Wow, there's our anchor chain. <laughs> it works. You turned into an Aussie gal. Yeah. I'm gonna go climb the mountain. That, yeah, climb the mountain. Climb the map. Ah. Wiggle your head. <laughs> we'll see if that works. We'll see if it keeps the slides off my face. So you think you're going to manage not to get those wet? Wind and there's no wind. It's hotter than hell. Great to have a boardwalk like this. I take it it goes all the way up the mountain, right? Which way? We go to the right. The lift goes to the mountain and the volcano. It's made up of rhodoliths. That I think they said 86%. It's made up of rhodoliths. There is color in there. You can see it. Starting to bloom. This is the Choya? Mm -hmm. Isla Coronado, the aptly named jewel in the Sea of Cortez about 15 kilometers to the north of the small city of Loreto on the Mexican Baja Peninsula, the source of a steady stream of tourists keen to experience the pristine beaches, clear water and incredible wildlife that Isla Coronado has to offer. We feel fortunate to have our own transportation and accommodation safely anchored in the bay right below the extinct volcano. Unlike most visitors, we have a different focus today, a visit to an archaeological wonder that hides in plain sight and relative obscurity. You don't want to step on this if you're barefoot. 
I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the video. If you're looking now, you can see the far wall there. Between those two islands. I need a rest, it's hot. You haven't even started the volcano. I'm not talking to you. We made it, bud. We made it. This far. <laughs> this is only like a quarter of the way. Thank you. She's hot. So look at this guy. I'm talking to the video. There's fruit there. I think it's fruit, or maybe it's this new budding cactus. A breeze. Thank goodness. The feeling that this is a unique place is overwhelming. The mute volcano rising at just a short distance to the north and the white hot sun burning mercilessly down upon us serves only to enhance the feeling of distance from everyday life. So almost everywhere you step, you break up these fossilized shells. No matter how careful you are, they're everywhere. Kind of buried in the sand and the rock. That's not a fossilized shell. That's just a regular old shell. This guy's fossilized. So what's happened here is the sand's washed away, but the bigger things keep dropping. You see? Yeah. I mean, if you look up there into that little ravine there, it's not really a ravine, but you know, you can see exactly that happening. And over there too, see? But you see the angle of the... Sand, the line on the sand, in the sand. Yeah. And that's because it, it washed down from the sea over those islands. We are looking for beds of fossilized coral and we tackle the rightmost branch of the canyon first. So there's no coral here. Undeterred, we head for the leftmost branch of the canyon, telling ourselves that it looks more promising. There's evidence that there is wind here sometimes. Everywhere it seems, the importance of the daily struggle for water is apparent. That's coral. Fossilized coral. They've all rolled down from up there. This is what we came for, what we hope to find. This thing is super light. So this was at sea level in times gone by. The coral we hope to find is sitting above our heads, clinging to rocks cast down from the volcano. The rocks themselves sitting on a deep bed of sand washed in from the sea. Over the ages, the lagoon eroded away and the corals dropped to where we can see them at our feet. We found shade. We need shade. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was, what, 120,000 years ago? 120,000 years ago, yep. Yeah. And you think the common era <laughs> is only 2,000 years ago? <laughs> so it's 60 of those periods of time. That's crazy. The last time that volcano exploded was 160,000 odd years ago. I'm here to tell you. My Aussie danglies work. They may look dorky, but they work. <laughs> Much better than having flies on your face and neck. It's a flyless dork. I'm a flyless dork, yes I am. I think we're getting our heads around it now. This plaza has been scooped out from the erosion of the water from countless storms rushing down the side of the volcano over the ages. In the distant past, where Lizzie is standing, it has been a bed of deep sand, and on top of that, a layer of rocks from the volcano and cling to that the corals which are now fossilized. 120,000 years ago the earth found itself in an interglacial period much as we do now. Over thousands of years sea levels rose to levels much higher than they are now and then receded again. 
as the next glaciation period happened. Due to human activity, Earth faces the same prospect now, but over a much accelerated time scale. Canyon Coronados can only contribute to the knowledge humans will need to face this challenge. We're starting to feel like ribs on a barbecue. It's time to head for the volcano. You sure this one's frankincense? No. It doesn't smell like anything. I smell it when I get close though. Oh, I smell it, yes. Oh, that smells good. No wonder they make perfume out of it. I wonder if this is still alive. I bet it is. Here's the path. We're here. Oh my God. We're here. Where is here? Down at the bottom anyway, almost at the bottom. Hey, how's you girl? Yeah. How do you feel? I'm ready. You are. So am I. Not down there. Over there is where we came from, the lagoon. Cheers. Was it worth the walk? Yes, but it's way too hot to go mm. to the top. Yeah. That's a winter time endeavor. I want the not one to do in the summer. I'd say it's better to do it in the winter. Don't you agree? Yeah. A trip down the timeline. Yeah. Cool. It's basically a layer cake of time. Yeah. 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 It was, yeah. Really it was really neat. So what did you think of it? What did I think of it? If you want to plan this trip, plan it in the winter. Um, you want to do it when there's a bit of wind. Incredible. It's, it, it just makes you feel so aware of just how small we are. And with all the significance we think we hold. We're not even a spit in the darkest, heaviest storm on the darkest night. That's not even us. Yeah. Nothing. And so all these other things that people get all excited about. Kind of drift away in places like that. I sort of how clever man is. But what struck me is man has been as intelligent as man is for over a hundred thousand years. Yeah. <laughs> and look how long it took us to yeah. come from basically being very primitive hunter-gatherers to here. Yeah. Despite that intelligence, it made me realize just how incredibly fragile knowledge and intelligence is. Mm. And this is how long it took to get here. And that is something you really, really should think about. And yeah, that makes me kind of sad. Yeah. Okay. Poor old, old coral, they're just sitting there minding their own business. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll still be there minding their own business. Even after we've blown up half the world, they'll still yeah. survive. Yeah. Hey, Mr. Seagull. <laughs> yeah, he thinks you're going to go home food. No fish for you. No, we don't have anybody. We don't have anything. Hey, hey, get up there. He's up on there. Uh, get up. Damn bird. <laughs> okay. Oh. I'm out of shape. But we're both out of shape. We're more out of shape than the old. There's no hope for us. <laughs> Not much, but a little bit. Well, I still are. You're still a cute shape. <laughs>